Hi, Was. So tell us, how do you use uh, purpose and culture in your work? I use purpose for identifying why we're here as a pretty critical first step uh, when we come together. Um, it's a piece about alignment. What are we doing here? And culture is how do we work? Great. And why is that important? We don't know why we're here and we don't have clarity and alignment around that then we are very likely either going to waste our time, get frustrated or not achieve um, collectively what we set out to. Great. So you mentioned already what might happen when it's missing as mm. well. And in fact, my, my story of where it's missing is being invited into facilitate a workshop um, around future possibilities for an organisation. I was given a purpose to work with. I took that into the meeting, into the workshop, but the group wasn't aligned. They didn't agree with that as an outcome. And I needed to spend several hours working with them to find a purpose that they were able to agree and align with before we could actually move forward. Once we found that, we had a really productive session, but until that point, there was actually no point. There was, there was no value in continuing. On culture, um, I reflect on how do we work together? And my experience in this space is it's quite easy to come up with descriptors of culture. You know, we want to be inclusive. We value diversity. It's much harder and it's important to be able to understand what's the behavior that, that goes with that culture. So for example, if we're valuing diversity, are we asking who's not in the room that needs to be? Who's affected by the things that are being discussed here and do they have a voice? Right, that's a fantastic example. Yeah, thank you. Simon, <laughs> how do you use purpose and culture in your work? Yeah, purpose and culture is really at the heart of everything I do with clients. Like this is where I start. I don't even start without that to clarify what is the intention, the collective intention of what, yeah, for what we are doing and to identify how we need to work together. And can you share examples of, of where you've used that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the last few years I've worked with a large global organization and we were developing a community of practice for um, a big team, like 200 people team over different continents and countries and different time zones. And we created a purpose um, for the community of practice in a whole, but also for each of the session. And what that helped us to do was to align, first of all, as the facilitators, what are we actually trying to achieve? We also got the buy-in from the participants, so they knew right from the beginning what this, what we are there for. And we also, it helped with being actually really transparent. And I often say that to my clients too, like being transparent on what we're trying to achieve and what we can't achieve here. So in, for example, it's very powerful to say, we're just here to consult or to explore or to ask questions or to inform, or we're actually here to make a decision. So it's very clear, very powerful to distinguish that from the beginning. And in those sessions, we also used um, a culture that's online, so we call it the virtual etiquette. And we make it very participatory because the idea is in the community of practice that people are sharing different experiences, but also become comfortable in asking questions to their coll colleagues that are across the globe. And after doing this a year and a half, they now started doing face-to-face -face workshops. And I heard really lots of positive feedback where people recognized each other. Oh, I've seen you in the web and on the online course. And it's so great to know people and to talk to people and to hear how other people experience similar issues. So it's really working that that clarity of purpose and then clarity of culture and really standing for um, participatory um, engagement, which was hard to get going at the beginning, but now they really, really love it and, and really, really value it. Excellent. So in learning those skills, they've now taken them on and it's it's becoming second nature for how they work together. Yes. And the facilitators now always have the purpose, like the purpose um, for the session, but then also the purpose for each part of the session, like each intervention they're doing has also its purpose. So it's becoming more and more purposeful, which is really, really beautiful to see how, how that's evolving. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. So we're running this course soon, um, The Essence of Facilitation, where we look at purpose and culture as a distinction. And it'd be great to have you there.